continue with the fourth light and remind us, inshallah ta'ala. We started with a surah, which we mentioned that this surah, inshallah ta'ala, is a template and it acts as a model for building a successful society or successful Muslim community. Because this surah we've been looking at, in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us with certain etiquettes and certain mannerism that if we were to abide by these etiquettes, if we were to abide by these mannerism, we'll build a strong society and a strong Muslim community. And at the same time, in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from certain mannerism and behavior that destroys societies and communities. So this surah, we said, is the building block in building a society and a community. And last week, we looked at ayah number one to ayah number two. This week, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be looking at ayah number three to ayah number five. So we're looking at ayah number three. We're starting with that today, inshallah ta'ala. And ayah number three begins with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who were in there in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ They lower their voice when they're speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the way the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum used to lower their voice in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to whisper to him to the point that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, I cannot hear you, please tell me what you're saying again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ These are the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is purified their hearts with taqwa. لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ for them, is forgiveness from their Lord وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ And a great reward because of that action. Now, in order for us to understand this verse, like any other verse in the Qur'an, you have to look at the verse before it and the verse after it. So what verse came before this? The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a prohibition. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِي وَلَا تَجْهَرْ لَهُ بِقَوْلْ كَجَهْرِ بَعْدِكُمْ بَعْضًا so the first order, or the first ayah before this was what? All you believe. Do not raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu And we've done the tafsir of this last week. And do not call him the same way you call each other. Otherwise, what will happen? An extremely destructive matter. Which is, if you was to do so, your actions will become null and void. Without even you perceiving it. So in this ayah, Allah Ta'ala mentioned a destructive matter, which is to raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the ayah that follows it, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions what the salvation or the safety should be. And what is the salvation and safety? To lower your voice in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is usloob, the way of the Qur'an. That Allah Ta'ala, many times in the Qur'an, He mentions the muhlikat, the destructive affairs, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what after that? The things that will save you. What's an example of this? Where Allah ta'ala mentions muhlikat or munjiyat. That which would destroy you and that which will save you. An example of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alladheena kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar. Those who disbelieve and they die in a state of kufur, ulaika alayhim la'latullah. They have the curse of Allah upon them. Wal-mala'ika and the angels and the whole of mankind. Now what ayah comes after this ayah? What's the ayah that comes after this ayah? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you this is the munjiyat, what will save you. Wa ilahukum ilahum wahid. And your God or the one you worship is only one that the munjiyat here is tawheed. So in this ayah, Allah ta'ala mentions the way out of what came out from the previous ayah. Inna alladheena yudduna aswatahum inda rasulillah. Those who lower their voice in the, in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ulaik, these are the ones. But rather, we don't say these are the ones. We say, those are the ones. So in Arabic, what is now you say, hadha. What is fa, dhalik. And if it's plural, ha'ula. And if it's fa, ulaik. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about these people, he says, ulaik. He used some, for them something which is fa. What does this prove? This shows their high and lofty station of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Not these, but those to show they have a high and lofty stage of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like when it comes to the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This book, la rayba fi. What does Allah ta'ala say? Hadha al-kitab wa thalika al-kitab. Thalika al-kitab, la rayba fi. That is the book to show the high and lofty status of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika al-ladheena imtahana Allah qulubahum lit-taqwa. These are the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purified their hearts with taqwa. And this ayah is a proof that real taqwa is taqwa of the way. Taqwa of the heart. Yes, taqwa, part of taqwa is what you do with your limbs and your outward appearance. But the root of taqwa and the asal and the foundation of real taqwa is what? Taqwa of the heart. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw a man in salah and he was demonstrating khushur, outward appearance of submission and servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah, which is something which is desired. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-taqwa ha-huna. Real taqwa is here. Real taqwa is where? In the heart. Because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there's a piece of flesh in the body. If it's whole, the whole body will be whole and complete. If it's corrupt, the whole body will be corrupt. Allah wa hiya qalb. And that piece of flesh is the heart. And that's what Abu Ray radiallahu an, in explanation of this hadith, used to say, Al qalb malik. Wal a'da junoodu. The heart is the king, and its soldiers are the limbs. Now, some may use this as an excuse and say, when they abandon the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they engage in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, Akhi, have some taqwa, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not do this. He said, At taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here. It doesn't matter what my actions are. The real taqwa is here. How do we reply to this? We reply to them by saying, Lo kana taqwa ha huna. If taqwa was truly here, la taqwa, la kana fi taqwa ha huna. Taqwa will show in your limbs. If taqwa is truly in your heart, it will show in your limbs. Why? What is the proof of this? What we just mentioned. Inna fil qal mudra. There's a piece of flesh in the body. If it's pure, if it's whole, the whole body is whole. And if it's corrupted, the body is corrupted. And what's that piece of flesh? The heart. So if your heart had taqwa, your limbs would act according to what? Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلْتَقْوَىٰ And what is their word? لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً Forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ And then in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجَرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ That those who call you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the hujurat. What is hujurat? Was he here last week? Was he here last week? No, don't look behind you. Was he here last week? You was here last week. What is hujurat? Al-hujurat is jam'u al-hujra. It's the plural of the chamber. Chambers, the houses of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who call you from the hujurat, this is in reference to those when they want something from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa they come to his houses of his wives. And they will shout, Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad, come out. Muhammad, ukhruj lana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Aktharuhum la ya'qilun. The majority of them have no aql. Aql in Arabic comes from the word which means a rope or something you tie something with. So you see the Qatar national dress, the thing they put on their head. It's called igal, because the root of it, when they wanted to slaughter camels or things like that, they would tie the camel's leg down with that. They call it aql because it ties you down from stupid and irresponsible behavior. That's called aql. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aktharuhum la ya'qilun. And the aql that's meant here is aql al-rushd. The intellect or a mind of a rushd The mind of reasoning, intellectual behavior, and logic that they don't have logical reasoning. Because aql is of two types. There's aql or rushd. The aql, the mind or the intellect of what? Reasoning, having logic, having rationale behind what you do. And the opposite of that is what? Being irrational, reckless, unintelligent. This is aql or rushd. The mind of what? Or intellect of what? Being rational, logical, and being able to reason. The second type of aql is aql at taklif The mind or the intellect of liability. That most of us, we're at that stage now, when you reach maturity, that you're liable for your actions. And the opposite of this act, uh, aql or this intellect of liability is what? Insanity, that you're crazy. 
You have no mind. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُ Most of them don't have aql of what? Is it intellect of reasoning or intellect of liability? Of reasoning. Because if it was to be that of liability, the opposite of is it what? They're crazy. And if they're crazy or they have no mind, they're not blameworthy. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so when the ulama, they say in the books of fiqh, for those who used to go to the fiqh class, that from the condition of wudu, a person has to be aqil, has to have aql. What aql does this refer to then? Is this intellect of reasoning or intellect of liability? Liability. When we say, for example, a person, in order to be given the responsibility of dealing with finances, for example, you have an orphan in your care, and it's time to give him his wealth, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ Test the orphans when they, until they reach the age of marriage. When you want to give him his money now, he has to have aql to act with his money. What aql does he need? Is it the aql of liability or the aql of reasoning? What, which one does he need? Reasoning. That's what Allah Ta'ala said. فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَادْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالَهُمْ If you see they have reasoning. And what is the proof? It doesn't have to be mature. Allah Ta'ala said, test al-yatama. Test the orphan. And an orphan is only an orphan until he matures. Once he's reached the age of maturity, he's no longer an orphan. This is a mistake many people make. That say, oh, I'm a yatim, I'm 40 years old, I'm a yatim, I'm 50, I'm a yatim, I'm 70, I'm a yatim. La. Once you've passed the age of maturity, you're no longer a yatim. So the orphan, you could give him his wealth. So the aql Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to is the aql of what? A rushd of sound reasoning. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا if only they were patient, hatta takhruja ilayhim, until you come out to them, it will be better for them. Meaning you will answer their need. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they just been patient and he came out, he will answer their need. And Uthaymi rahimullah azza wa jal, he said there's no doubt that the Prophet sallallahu will answer their need. Why? He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nobody ever ask him for anything and he'll say no. So Uthaymi rahimullah ta'ala mentioned the poetry. And this poetry was used to describe the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zainul Abideen. Uthaymi Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, nobody is more deserving of this poetry than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll tell you this poetry. Ya Abdullah, you going to memorize this poetry? Huh? Shi'r. You ready? Okay, the poetry is this. He said, Ma qala la qattun illa fi tashahudihi. You got it, right? وَلَوْلَ التَّشَهُّدْ لَكَانَتْ لَاُهُ نَعْمْ That he never once said no, ever, except in tashahud. By saying, أَشَهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَوْلَ التَّشَهُّدْ And if it wasn't for tashahud, لَكَانَ لَاُهُ أو لَكَانَتْ لَاُهُ نَعْمْ His no's will always be his yes, if it wasn't for the tashahud. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they're impatient, it will, it will come out to them and answer their need. And how does the ayah end? Wallahu ghafooru rahim. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving and Allah ta'ala is all merciful. Meaning those who participated in this action, what does it mean? Allah forgave them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy upon them. This is from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That inna Allah la yaghfir an yushrak bih wa yaghfir ma duna thalika li man yasha. That Allah does not forgive your associate partners with him, but he forgives everything else, no matter what a person does. Liman yasha is under the what? The mashia, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except, of course, if he repents. If he repents, Allah ta'ala, he repents his cell, he would definitely forgive him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ آخَرُ And those who do not call along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another God. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And did not kill a soul that Allah has made impermissible to kill. They do not do this. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they do not fall into zina. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكْ And whoever does any of these sins, يَلْقَى أَثَامَ It will fall into a grave sin. يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ It will not just be punished يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ But the punishment يُضَاعَفْ It will be multiplied. For him, Yom al Qiyamah, wa yakhludu fiha muhan, and he will be in a humiliated state. After this, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Illa man tab, 
except for the one who repents. وَآمَنَ And he repents. وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا And he does righteous actions. But look how the ayah ends. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ All those bad deeds, Allah will turn it into good deeds. That's why Yawm Al-Qiyamah, each and every single person, يَخْلُ Rabbi, will be alone with his Lord. And there will be no interpreter between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And between him and the rest of the creation is a veil. The rest of the creation, Afan, they will see him. They will see this person in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they will not hear that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to this person. So Allah ta'ala will remind him, Ya Abdi, O oh my servant, on such and such and such a day, you did such and such a sin. And the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believer, being a person that doesn't lie, you admit it. I did this. On this day you did that. You say, yes, I did it. And there's some other sins which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are of an easy reckoning. And we pray Allah ta'ala, you have sibra, hisab, and your to give us all the easy reckoning. Allah will not mention. And in the mind of the servant, he knows that your Lord never forgets. But Allah doesn't mention it, so he keeps quiet. So Allah said, you did this, you did that. And he think, you know what, I'm finished. That's it, khalas for me. At this point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, all of those bad deeds, I've turned it into good deeds. So whatever bad deeds he had, he will see it as a mountain of good deeds. And this person, every time Allah Ta'ala says, Ghafar to I forgive you, who makes sujood. I've forgiven you, who makes sujood. And the rest of the creation will be saying to each other, this person, he didn't do anything but good. And when all of those evil deeds become bad, uh, all those evil deeds become good deeds due to his repentance, then he says to Allah, oh Allah, you forgot. Oh, you didn't forget, rather. He said, Allah, I also did this sin. I also did that sin. I also did this sin. So that all of those sins could be turned into good deeds. So although they did this, Allah Ta'ala forgave them. And what is the proof Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala forgave them? What's the proof? Because we're all saying, yes, naam. We're all doing tasleeka, naam. What's the proof Allah forgave them? Huh? In the ayah. How do we know Allah forgave them? The way the ayah end. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. And this is very important in the Quran. Always look at the end of the ayah. The names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has a consequence on the ruling. For example, Innama jaza'u ladhina yuharibun Allah wa rasoolahu wa yas'awna fil ardi fasada. Look at this ayah, that the reward or the recompense for those who fight Allah and his messenger and they cause corruption on the face of the earth. What is their reward? And you qattalu, they should be killed. Or you sallabu, or they should be crucified. Or an tuqatta' aydihim wa arjuluhum min khilaf. Or their hand and their leg should be cut off from opposite sides. Or an yunfaw min al-ard, they should be expelled from the land. And that is for them in the dunya khizjun wa lahum fil akhirati azabun azim. That's a humiliation for them in the dunya and in the hereafter, they have a severe punishment. Illa ladhina tabu, except for those who repent before and taqdiru alayhim, before you capture them. And how does the ayah end? Fa'alamu anna allaha wafuru rahim. No Allah is all forgiving, Allah is all merciful. The ulama based on this, that Allah ended with this name, these two names, they say in Sharia, those who are at war with Allah and His Messenger, and they cause corruption on the face of the earth, if they repent before you capture them, you cannot kill them, you cannot crucify them, you can't cut their hands from opposite sides, you cannot expel them. Why? Because the ayah ends with what? Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. Unlike the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wasariqu wasariqatu faqta'u aydiyahuma. That the man that steals, the woman that steals, cut off their hands. Jaza'an bima kasaba. A reward from what their hands have earned. Nakala min Allah. So someone was reading to A'rabi. A'rabi are people in the desert Arabs that are not usually educated. So someone was reading this ayah to him. That this is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. The A'rabi said, la a'id. He doesn't know the ayah. But he didn't match with him. He said, no, repeat it. The person repeated it again. And he said, Wallahu ghafoor rahim. He said, no. He said, repeat it again. He said, Wallahu ghafoor rahim. He said, no, repeat it again. Then the person repeated said, Wallahu azizun hakim. He said, naam, that's correct. He said, lo rahimah wa ghafara. If Allah had forgiven and had mercy on him, 
ما قطع الله ما قطع his hand off ولكن عز وحكم Allah is Aziz he was mighty and he judged so his hands has to be cut off so the way the I end is an indication of the hukum so the I end of what Wallahu ghafur rahim that Allah Ta'ala he forgave them and what's the ayah after this a very important ayah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered us Ya ayu alladheena amanu or oh, you believe I will mention the statement Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu last week. Whenever you hear, Ya ayu alladheena amanu, pay close attention. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us with here or prohibit us from? He said, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا If a fasiq comes to you with news, verify the news. What is a fasiq? They say a fasiq is an munharif عَنْ دِينِهِ عَنْ الدِّينِ وَالْمُرُوءَ a person you call a fasiq, I think they translate in English as an evil liver, is a person that has strayed and gone astray from his religion and al muru'a and from normal social norms or cultural norms or accepted cultural norms in society. It's a person that strayed from that. So in all society, in all cultures, you have norms, respected and agreed upon norms in society. That doesn't contradict Islam. A person who strayed from that is a fasiq. And the opposite of fasiq is a adil, somebody who is upright. That if a fasiq, it comes to you with news, meaning somebody who strayed from the deen, abandons obligation, or a person who engages in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it comes to you with news, if you look at a person from his outward appearance, that there's certain social norms in all society, even when it comes to clothing, that people that dress a certain way, wear certain things, and the way they wear it, you could say, you know what, this is a, this is a fasiq. Or, you know, as a person from his outward appearance, he has shortcomings in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he brings you news, what do you do? Do you accept it? No. Do you reject it? No. But you verify it. If you accept it, it could be dangerous because you may be lying. And if you reject it, it may be truthful on this occasion. فَتَبَيَّنُوا Another qira'a فَتَثَبَّتُوا Confirm, verify his information. It's a wajib. Now, what if a adil, somebody who's upright, comes with this news? What should you do? You accept it. Accept in the case of what? Accusations. So even if somebody's upright, he comes and he accuses another Muslim of zina. What do you do? Do you accept it? Do you reject it? Do you verify? Witnesses, barakallahu feekum. He has to bring four witnesses. If he doesn't, you have to, he will be whipped 80 times. 80 times. And in the sight of Allah from the kathibun. And the shahada is witness or testimony will never be accepted again. What if an upright person comes now and says such and such a person is stole? What do you do? Do you accept it? Do you reject it? Or do you need witnesses? Witnesses. In this case, you need two witnesses. Only accept if the person that was stolen from said, he stole from me, and he swears by Allah. And he brings a second witness who swears with him. You don't need another two witnesses. What in the case of somebody that comes for zakah, for charity? And you know this person to be rich. He has money. But he said, look, I have no money anymore. I've become poor. I've lost all my wealth. Does he need witnesses? Yes. Does one witness suffice? No. Does two witnesses suffice? No. How many witnesses does he need? He needs to bring three witnesses. This is the case of claiming an accusation. What about the case of Ramadan? The moon sighting for Ramadan. If a person comes and is adil, is, up, uh, uh, is upright and trustworthy, and he said, I spotted the moon for Ramadan, do we fast? MashaAllah. You, you sure? Yes, I agree with you. Barakallahu feek. Yes, we do. Because the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, when he, sp when he saw the moon, he said, look, it's fast. The Prophet told you to fast. He told them to fast. Nowadays, though, they do try and seek some witnesses because in some parts of the world, there's a reward attached to it now. That if you're the first to sight the moon, you get a reward. There's a cash reward. But normally, yes, one person, it suffices. We all fast, inshallah ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to mention the wisdom of why we have to verify this news. And to see the bi jahala, that if you do not verify the news of a fasiq, you may harm a people out of ignorance, and then you become regretful of your actions. Inshallah, Taala, the next week we'll go into this ayah, 
and the ayah that comes after it, bi ta'ala, the other half of this ayah. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha,